Okay, I'm going to come back to CES via for learners and I'm going to launch CES via for learners 3.5. Oh, you're a composer and singer too? Yeah. Okay, there's the initial page and I'm going to go to uh, explore and visualize. That's what we are learning. And let's go there, explore and visualize. Start with data, right? Start with data and choose data here. I'm going to say BS, then BS Bank. So I'm going to choose the first one on, the, on, on there. And you can see various uh, thing here. There are 56 variables and 1.1 million rows. This is big data, big data analysis that you are doing. I'm going to click on OK. And we have the data here, right? So that's data. And we have been talking about um, logistics regression. Today, what I'm going to be doing in this short time, uh, I'm going to talk about how to run linear regression and how to improve, right? how to in improve the result. That's my, my main concern. So the theme is how to improve Regression result. Or you can say, how do I fit the data better than before, right? So there are various methods to do this, and we're going to be using CES via and walk through it together. So we have the data, and let's go to linear regression first. So if you click on the object, and you have various analysis that you can do, you know, look at all these various analysis that I have not touched upon. I'm just touching on linear regression and logistic regression. That's about it. And uh, I'm going to click on linear regression. Now I'm going to deal with linear regression. And here is the template. And I'm going to go to um, roles. Here you're going to assign the, the values. Response is dependent variable. And this time, I'm going to uh, choose not binary uh, variable, but interval new sales, interval target, interval new sales, because this is continuous variable. If you want to look at what that is, you can uh, do a search later. So target interval new sales, that's what I want to look at. And continuous effects, I'm going to include all the large variable. So large RFM 1, 2, 3, 2, 12. So I'm going to choose all of them. You can you know, check on <clears throat> each variable or click on shift and go to the end. Choose them all together. <clears throat> That's going to be your variables. and classification variable, category one and customer value one. So what is category account activity level, right? Level A means uh, you have a high activity and I'm sorry, level X means high activity, Y is middle level activity and the Z is low level activity. Category one, this is A to Z, A to E, I think A, B, C, D, E. Uh, so customer value, A means customers with high credit. E means uh, customer with low credit. So that's uh, categories. I'm going to add them. And I'm ready to run one linear regression. So here is done. And here it is. I have the linear regression. You don't have to run with automatic effects. The result is found right here. And you know, good thing about SAS is, is that uh, SAS visualizes everything. 
and we can see which one is strong, which one is not strong. So these variables in purple are strong variables, statistically significant, blue ones are not as significant. And residual plots are these errors, how those errors are related to the independent variable and dependent variable that's shown here. And here, this one, uh, interval new sales is also very important for you to look at. Uh, the best scenario is that <clears throat> there's no gap between these uh, uh, predictive average and observations. Okay, this blue line and yellow line has no gap, then that's the best situation. But unfortunately, we see here, we see a, a large gap between uh, this yellow line and then this blue line. And over here, we have also large gap, right? So it tends to under predict in early values and later in uh, large values, it also under predict. However, in between from here, where is it from 10% to about 75%, it tends to over predict, right? Under predict, over predict, that's what we see. And the gap has to be small, but in the first 10% uh, and then later 20%, there are gaps increasing. So uh, if you want to understand how much it is explaining, then you can click on ASE and look at this R square and it says point 0.0933, meaning less than about 10% or 9.3% of the variance was explained by this uh, uh, um, regression, right? That's what we can understand. So you can write it down. And another thing that you can look at is root MSE. Root means mean square error, right? So that's 8,000. Uh, $86, meaning that uh, the error, average error is $8,086. So large error in account we see right there. So look at this uh, uh, visual plot. The best thing is that uh, it ranges between um, three to positive three to negative three. Okay, so this is standard deviation. So it has to range from three to negative three. That's the best case. However, we see a large deviation like 60 standard deviation. And here are the things that you see here. And that's uh, outliers. And that's distorting your linear regression. So uh, that's not a good case for you to go through. And we have to, uh, in, you know, improve that. So um, let's uh, take a look at that. If you want to examine the situation more carefully, then click on this maximize button. Then you will be able to see these tables. So dimensions, over or ANOVA, these statistics, parameter, estimate, type three test, assessment, and assessment statistics. Look at dimensions. Dimension says how many, uh, uh, variables that we have included. It says 15 variables were included there and for classification effects, two of them. And uh, number of columns was 21. And those observations that we have read is 1,060,000 uh, observations. Among them, only 211,509 observations were used because among 1 million people, only two, 211,000 people responded to your uh, survey. That's why you have only 211 people. So about 20% response rate, you see that. And I want you to look at ANOVA. If you have ANOVA, you have to look at this um, probability or p-value. It's uh, below 0 0.0001, meaning that this uh, regression has a linear relationship with dependent variable. So this is good, R squared is 0 0.933. And now go to fit statistics. Here you can see R squared again, 0 0.933. So this is something that you wanna check and uh, mean square error 
again, that's a, a, a Ruth MSA. You want to look at that $8,806 of uh, uh, error you can see in this uh, uh, re regression. And now you also look at AIC, AIC, SVC. You are going to run multiple models, right? And at that time, you want to look at the R squared and also uh, compare with AIC, AICC, and SVC, right? So, and uh, the tip is that the smaller value, the better it is. Can I write here? Annotate. Okay. The smaller. smaller the better okay the smaller the better so now later right now you you have to remember 4000 is it 4,000? No. 4 million, 17,000 something something. And uh, you are going to compare it with another model. At the time, you have to see how much reduction you were able to achieve. That's something that you want to look at. It. Okay, that's done. Now mouse. And then click on parameter estimate. Then you see uh, you have a you know, the Excel result that I showed you before. So that's uh, uh, there. And you have to look at the probability and they are significant, but also look at how the D erase. Okay. erase. Look at, uh, um, annotate. Can I, where did it go? So anyway, um, so look at this one. RFM six and seven are insignificant, right? You see that it's uh, greater than 0 0.05, 0 0.69. So these are insignificant variables. And look at this one, RF 10 and 11 are also insignificant. So uh, you can ignore them. So that's an important finding. And we also see, now look at this one. RFM3 is negative, right? It's not positive, negative. It has negative impact on your sales amount. How much? $2,542 if you had a sales in the past three years, okay? In other words, if you had a, a transaction with this customer, in the past three years, then um, the person is not likely to buy any product to the extent of $2,542. Now look at this one, count purchase past three years. So if there is a one account, one transaction in the past three years, that's negative $1.667. If there were two transactions in the past, past three years, how much is it? Since the coefficient is negative $1,667, how much is it? You had two transactions in the past three years. So simply $1,667 times two gives you 3,020 something, 200 something something dollars that much loss you're gonna have rather than save. You had three transactions in the past three years, so how much? Very good. So about negative $48,000, right? If, if you had a negative. Now look at uh, count purchase lifetime. This is also very interesting because Oh, but it's insignificant, so we can we can skip. And these are insignificant, so you can skip. So the the negative value. So if I give you a, a multiple choice question, how many negative significant impact 
uh, do you find in this regression result? Then how many would that be? How many negative significant impacts do you find in this result? How many? Anyone? Two, very good. Good job, Brittany. So, so this one is negative and significant. This one, negative significant. However, this one is not significant because the p-value is greater than 0.05, it's 0.69. And this one, again, greater than 0.05, it's not significant. Right, that's why only we have two negative significant impacts. Look at type three test. This is a very important test that you should check out. Type three test tells you which variable is the most significant in terms of its statistics. Look at this, large RFM 12, it has the strongest in impact. No. It shouldn't be this way. Oh, sorry, I, I don't think I made the right statement. Um, so type three test uh, list all the variables and that shows show you the p p value and see which one is significant or not. That's what it does. And later, I'm going to show you how to include only significant significant variables. Assessment. Is not that important, so you can uh, skip. And ASE assessment statistics not not as important, so you can skip. 